Uh, so, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming you've already watched the video on the on the algorithm of the bisection method, and you've watched the introduction video to the bisection method. So, what we get to do in this video, we just get to use the same data from the previous uh, video of our algorithm to just come up with uh, a flowchart. So, what do we understand about the bisection method? So, I'll just assume you already have written down the algorithm somewhere and then we'll try to convert it to the flow chart we see the way it gets to work so the first thing that we want to see is uh we want to say to of course start with our i i is equal to one and why are we saying that because we want to have the maximum number of uh, iterations we just don't want to the program to continuously learn we want to, to get to a point where we say okay less than maybe 10 times we don't want it to do more than 10 times so say we initialize that test of all and then the first thing that you saw in the program was we needed to find the function of a okay use the value of it find f of a right so then you ask yourself a question of course that is high should be is less than or equal to what n okay so for the just for the sake of space i me to just remove everything else on top so that i start from the top so i is equal to one and then we need to find the function of a right is equal to f a right so that's what we have so far and then what do we know so since we're just initializing that we can just put it in the rectangle okay and then after we've done that we want to ask ourselves a question to say is i so i is i less than or equal to n for a maximum number of iterations that we're looking at well if it is we'll proceed and then what do we know so af after this point you first thing that you'd want to do is first of all get to find the midpoint which we said you need to write it in the form of what a and then add a certain toler tolerance such as b minus a over a2. If you want, you can also use a plus b divided by 2. It's the same. But this one is easier because you'll be able to easily spot out the tolerance if it's less than a tolerance. And then the f of r is also supposed to be determined as well after we found the value of r. So at this point, we said if the function of r is, is equal to 0, so there are cases where if this guy if fr is equal to 0 and if it is and if a tolerance b minus a over 2 is less than the tolerance then we can say our value is what is r so this is a question so is is that that so what you'd want to make sure is this is supposed to be under the shape because it's a decision box okay then that is also a decision that you're making so it says that the space is not it's not enough okay yeah something like that okay and then this is where we're just like putting a function so we'll just put a rectangle as well okay so what you're saying is if this is equal to zero and then if that is less than the tolerance this part is less than the tolerance then we can just say the value that we found is what the root so to say output r okay so outputting we use a parallelogram right and then you can just stop right so i don't have down there so just put it on top so just stop okay so else what happens of course this this may not always be true so if it's false, we now need to ask ourselves a question to say, okay, so which one are we going to discard? Is it A or B? So we'll, the fact that we started with just A, the function of A, we're going to compare that. So we'll say is the function of A multiplied by the function of R less greater than zero, which implies it's a positive, right? Is it a positive? So if it is a positive, what it means is, eh? A and R are lying on the same side. So we'd want to discard what? 
would want to discard A, meaning that we we'll consider midpoint R and then go with B. So we'll say, if it's true, then we we'll discard, we we'll discard our A. So we'll say, let now our new value of A be the midpoint itself. Okay, if that's true. So we're saying if this is yes, and we're saying if this is false. So say no. And then if it's true. So if it's true, yes, it goes the other side. And then if this is yes, we go down. So proceed. So the, the opposite may be true. It may be a, a negative. So if it's a negative, it means that if it's a negative, it means we'll have to discard B. So in that case, we'll say let the new value of our B be what? BR so that you can now consider the midpoint A with uh, you can consider A and then the midpoint R to find the midpoint. So before you get to design that again, you'd want to make sure that you get to increase this, right? So I plus plus. So that increase that and then join back there. Or if you want, you can just leave it in and open. So I plus plus and then it joins and then even this one as well. So this is w where our flowchart is. This is where it's going to work. Now, what happens in a case where i is no longer less than or equal to n, but you've not, meaning that you've not, still, you're not still satisfied here. So what it would mean is the method has failed. So if it says a no, then just output method failed or method failure. Okay. Because the maximum number of iterations have been what? Have been, yeah, they have all been used up. So, so basically, this introduces a flowchart of the bisection method. And I just hope that it has helped you to have a greater understanding on how the bisection method gets to work. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and watch out for the next video where we get to show this method on the Excel.